Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first chapter of this class called functions. So the basic object that we're studying in a calculus course uh, is function. And uh, we're going to use tools coming from calculus to study these functions. And these tools will be mostly sign tables, limits, and derivatives. But first thing first, if we're going to study function, we should go over a couple of basic definition. So the first definition of of course, of course, of course, because I like to say of course, of course a lot, is what is a function? So in mathematics for us in this class, a function, and it will be implied here throughout the, the, the chapter and the chapters of this course that these are real value functions because you could study functions in general. So is a relation between a set of inputs, between a set of inputs, and these inputs will be a subset of real numbers and a set of possible outputs. And of course, these outputs will be again real numbers. And then to be a function, you need this very special property uh, that for each input, we assign it exactly one, exactly one output. If uh, there's two outputs coming from one input, that's just a different type of relation. But for us, uh, functions, we take in some real numbers, and then it transformed these real numbers into other real numbers. So there's really a notion of things coming inside, being transformed by the function and coming out of it. So of course, we're not just going to say numbers coming in and numbers coming out. So we need a little bit more definitions to specify what we're talking about. So here, domain and range. So if you start with a function f, the set of all possible inputs is called the domain of the function f. And it's denoted DOM F. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's the set of all possible inputs. This is a subset of real numbers for us. Okay. So it's implied now. And the set of all possible outputs is called the range of that function. And it's denoted RNGF. And that's the set of all outputs. Of course, somebody is now sawing something outside. <laughs> Okay, it's a bit calmer now outside. Um, so next definition, again, related to functions, sets of definitions. So we have an X and it's inside the domain of the function F and we have a Y, which is the assigned value to X or the output of F. So what we like to, to what I like to do normally with function to truly visualize what a function is, I like to think about it as if the function itself is a box and that box, you know, is a little transformer. So it transforms what comes inside to something else and then it comes outside of the box. So if we look at the X coming in, so the X coming in here, boom, is inside the set of inputs or the domain, which is a subset of the real number, the real numbers. And then it goes inside F F does, does something to it, maybe through an equation or something else. And then it spits the Y and the Y will be somewhere inside the, um, the set of possible outputs or the range, which is a subset of real numbers. So X comes from the domain, goes inside the box, it gets transformed somehow, and then it goes outside of the box. And then this output is in the range of that function. All right, next set of a uh, couple of definitions. So the X, uh, the input is also known as the independent variable and the Y, the output is also known as the dependent variable. So this is something I'll be using a little bit. Uh, I mean, the, the that little box visualization of a function of, uh, okay, X goes in the box, something happens in the box and then something comes out, it's nice. But typically we'll be, we'll be using the functional notation to represent this transformation. So if you see f of x, so if you see an x in a bracket next to a f, then you know that x is coming inside f. And then if you see if you see it's equal to y, then you know that the output is y. So that's the functional notation. And here f of x should be read either as f evaluated at x, f at x, or like I used to use, like I use, like I said a couple of times already, f of x, my favorite but it's not f multiplied by x or f times x. Okay, so make sure you see the distinction. So a lot of people sometimes they they wonder, okay, which one is the independent variable? Which one is the dependent variable? So here I like to use that little trick. 
Uh, suppose you have like Kirby here, okay? And suppose Kirby is your box, he's your function, so he likes to eat stuff. So because Kirby is a strong, independent creature, whatever he's going to to uh, put in his mouth, okay, it's up to him. So it's what comes in is independent. So it's the independent part. So he can eat whatever he wants. So here's like a little cupcake. But of course, what's going to come out of him, okay, will depend on whatever whatever he's eating. So what comes out of him depends on what what is coming in. So if uh, if uh, for some reason Kirby puts in his mouth a bunch of nails, okay, he's going to poop a bunch of nails. Okay, so uh, you can put whatever he wants in his mouth, but what comes out of him, okay, depends on. Uh, what is coming in. So, of course, in serious terms here, so what's coming in is the X. So you are independent. The function is kind of independent. So X is the independent variable, but what comes out depends on what came in. So it's the dependent variable. I hope this clears things out. All right, let's end up this section with a bunch of remarks. Um, so a function is something that takes a number, it does something to it, and then it spits something out, okay? Or it poops something out, if you're thinking about Kirby there. Um, but what happens to x to become y is really up to the function. And what happens is, in general, extremely complicated. And one misconception about a uh, function is that, in general, a function is not a formula or an equation. Of course, if you have an equation for a function, if you know that f of x is x squared plus 1, if you put minus 2, you get minus 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1, and you get 5, so you have an explicit way to compute the output. So this is actually a function that is defined algebraically because we have an equation. But in general, there's a lot of examples of functions that are not defined by equations. So here's two very nice true or false questions for you. So is it true that a function is an equation? It's actually false. Is it true that an equation is a function? This is true. Okay, so make sure you see the distinction between the two things. This is a very, uh, it's, a, it's something that confuses a lot of people. In general, there's many different ways to describe and represent function, and we'll see that in, this, in the next section. Like I just mentioned, some function will be defined by a formula or an algorithm that will tell us explicitly how to compute the output for a given input, but others will just be given to us by a picture or the graph of the function. In some examples, especially in science, functions are first constructed with tables of measure outputs from selected inputs. Typically, we do this through experimentation. Uh, but a function in general is just that thing that binds two uh, variables together, x and y, uh, and the way it does it, hopefully there's an equation that, is, if you have an equation, that's kind of the best case scenario, but there's a lot of different type of functions that are not just defined by equation. But anyways, for that section, that's it. Bye-bye now.